Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Lore Lodge. I'm Aiden Mattis. I'm Thorn Bussy, as most people refer to me now. I like how you're just accepting it. At this I mean, point. Like, I what else can I really do? I appreciate that about you. That's that's oh, what I appreciate you. about you. Okay, wait. I'm gonna need the. I'm gonna need this later. Um, so we're gonna zoom this guy forward. Uh, as you can tell from the title of the video, we're gonna be talking about the Amarillo Zoo creature. Um, this is something that was brought to my attention over the past few weeks. Yep. Uh, the the official announcement about it came out on June 8th, and the internet has been a buzz. Uh, of course, the the usual suspects are making videos about you know how this is this is definitely this or definitely that. A lot of people threw out the term chupacabra. Mm. I uh, do we have people, a video on that? No, because the chupacabra is such a recent thing. How recent is it? 1995. Oh, really? Yeah, first reported Chupacabra sighting is in 1995. I didn't know it was that recent. There's more to it also because the Chupacabra that we all think about, kind of this like mangy coyote mm. thing, uh, is not the original. The original was seen in Puerto Rico, not in Mexico, mm. and it was uh, more reptilian mm. in, in shape and everything. So Interesting. Yeah, so a lot of people associate the Chupacabra as looking like sort of a mangy coyote or something, Yeah. Um, or like a, a coyote that looks off. Whereas mm. the actual one from Puerto Rico is reptilian, and what most people are describing as a chupacabra actually has a lot more in common with the skinwalker. So, Got it. Yeah. Which, so, of course, we will get into because this all does tie in yeah. to a lot of skinwalker mythology. Because and, and I spent a lot of time on the internet today looking into skinwalker stuff and I uh, ended up in a skinwalker ranch. Mm rabbit hole so we've got uh, a lot to go off of today oh, I bet. but let's uh let's start with this this creature from the amarillo zoo um here here here's what i want to say uh a lot of people have pointed out that this looks like sonic the hedgehog a lot of people said chupacabra a lot of people have been like oh it was a, a guy from a furry convention and he just got lost I do like that someone specifically said Sonic, Sonic the bef before they had to fix him for the trailer. Because Did everybody, say that? Yeah, that's what that's they... really the, funny. Yeah, the, the guy on the news thing was like, yeah, he looks like Sonic before they had to go and fix him because everybody hated the design. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which is To be great. fair, the, the design sucked. I mean, yeah, it was brutal. That, that was rough. Um, I don't know why you would ever try and make Sonic the Hedgehog look like weirdly human. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what that thinking Bad was. choices. Um... They fixed it. They listened. Yeah, they did. They'll they, never listen again I, because of what happened props, with the Morbius thing. Props now. to them. Oh my god, the Morbius thing was so funny. <laughs> I, I like that there's another petition that says we were all busy that weekend. <laughs> there's also one Bring that, it back. There's also said, no, no, we meant a TV show. <laughs> oh my god. I don't so, understand why Jared Leto consistently just fails to play a superhero. Um, Have you seen any interview with the man? No, he seems a little... Uh, Maybe you should have stuck to music. Yeah. But yeah, so in case you don't know what we're talking about, which is totally possible, uh, we're going to pop that over and hope I got the right monitor selected. I do for once. So, if you'll take a look, what we got here is is this boy right here. I'm going to pull up the right? YouTube. So, this was taken at about 1.25 a.m. on the 21st of May. Yes. This tweet right here is from June 8th. So approximately two and a half weeks passed mm. between, almost three weeks between, yep. uh, actually, yeah, three weeks, um, between this being recorded, this image, and this tweet being posted by the city of Amarillo. So the question uh, there is, you know, to, to what extent is this, is this something real versus could it be a hoax, could it be a publicity stunt? I think yep. that there's a number of possibilities. Um they do say it's a person, is it a person with a strange hat who likes to walk at night, a chupacabra? Do you have any ideas what this unidentified Amarillo object could be? So, of course, when you post something like this on the internet, it is going to go weird places. Yes. Uh, if we scroll through, I'm sure we'll get some interesting, uh, you should shoot it and find out. It's a furry, so that's a pretty minimal downside. <laughs> oh, <Lord. laughs> oh jeez. This was this oh, was a yeah. mistake. This part of the show. No, never. Um, this is exactly what we were looking for. Well, the Shrek one. The Shrek one's rough. That's no. That's that's what we're talking about. Okay. I. Uh, some of these are weirdly political. Um, what does that mean? 
Lil Nas X teams up with Grinder, a homophobic dog, Chick Fil A, and more. You know what? I will give, I I will give editorialized journalism this. They sure know how to do a headline oh, at this yeah. point. One hundred percent. Oh my god. But yeah, this is the image that's been going around the internet, and every possible TikTok account that even remotely discusses anything paranormal has been jumping onto the the bandwagon here and for those who are just listening to the show and can't see it what you're looking at here is a humanoid uh i can't determine the height because there's just nothing to base it off of but looks to be an adult sized person um arms hands go down to just above the knee which is totally normal for a human being um it there there is a question of where the face is uh from one angle it looks like it could be a a fox or a wolf face turning around and looking at you. A lot of people have said Demogorgon from Stranger Things. Oh, yeah. But the way I'm looking at it, I'm seeing the face as being on the left side of the uh, the figure and yeah, facing yeah. To, to the left. Yeah, I think that's the face. Also, just like the way the legs are bent, it would have to be a flamingo if it was facing the other direction because exactly. human legs don't bend that direction. Yeah, and if you look at this, this kind of looks like a headdress and this kind of looks like a cloak or a skirt down here. I want to know what they're holding. I don't think they're holding anything. I think that's behind the hand. Oh. Um, um, yeah, that's about. Like so that. what I went and did was I uh, compared the two. And, of course, you know, one is far more blurry than the other. But if you look on the right side, you've got the Amarillo creature. On the left side, you got an artist depiction of a skinwalker. I, I mean, I, I don't know what you guys think. I don't know what you think, Aiden. But to me, this looks like we're looking at you know, a, a cosplay almost. Pretty much, yeah. Or the possibility that is it is, in fact, an actual skinwalker, mm-hmm. um, which we have to remember that while skinwalkers as a shape-shifting uh, witch with paranormal powers mm-hmm. may or may not exist, yeah. medicine then absolutely exist no no doubt and the practice of skinwalking as in donning animal pelts and performing rituals mm. absolutely exists yeah so it is theoretically possible that what we're dealing with here is an actual skinwalker or it could be a person dressed up as a skinwalker it could be uh you know any number of things but when i look at these two pictures side by side i just think that there's no way of saying that those don't look similar yeah like no, the, it's, you would have to actively be trying to get people to think yeah. it isn't that i will say it does look to me like this one's wearing pants um, yes those look like trousers yeah uh but other than that yeah come on. if you're gonna do it commit to the bit <laughs> come on yeah why are you should be wearing a wolf pelt skirt yeah dude. um and like you know apparently like furry boots oh, uggs you could have worn uggs, worn uggs and a kilt how dare you but that is uh kind of my opinion on the subject here the the story itself is just kind of odd. Like uh, city officials like putting this request out to the public could mean one of two things: mm. either they they are at the point where they're so genuinely confused that they figured the public might know, yeah, or they're aware that it's not real and this is a publicity stunt to get people to go to the zoo or yeah. to raise awareness or just to get people interested in local events. Um, the uh, the the uh, the Parks and Recreation Director for the City of Amarillo said, We just want to let the City of Amarillo have some fun with this. It's definitely a strange and interesting image. Maybe Amarillo can solve the mystery of our UAO, unidentified Amarillo object. So, to me, that does not read like something that they're concerned about, no. necessarily. No, More so, it's it's something that they just want to, like, you know... They're, they're capitalizing on. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if the entire t- police department is probably just sitting there and they're like, I mean, worst case scenario. It's an it's, actual skinwalker and we can't do anything about it. Yeah, well, that <laughs> or like, because I'm imagining most of them probably don't believe in it. So they're probably like, it's probably just some weird dude in a dress. So like, let's have fun with it. It's 2022. Nothing wrong with a dude in a dress. Exactly. <laughs> or a maid outfit. Or a headdress. Uh, Throw it back. outfit, good lord. I think I have to put that on again, don't I? For what? I don't know. I feel like there was a donation goal that... We should uh, really keep track of our donation goals. Yeah. I liked uh, one guy commented on my TikTok about this who said uh, that he accidentally walked through a furry convention. Yeah. And How was that? 
And uh, basically every reply to his comment was, what do you mean accidentally? <laughs> like, how do you accidentally walk through a furry convention? How do you how do you look at, a, well, I guess you'd have to literally just be watching your own feet for like a solid hundred yards and then look up and realize, oh God. Somebody in the chat did just say, uh, Michaela the Creative said, we've also had kids break into that zoo and let animals out, so it's not exactly the most secure zoo out there. Interesting. Ooh, that's rough. Well, I, I want to know what kind of animals were taken out. I did have one guy who, uh, somebody pointed out, they were like, oh, wasn't this a no-sleep post? And I was like, the no-sleep post was posted on, like, you know, it was posted five days ago. Got it. Mean, this is the no-sleep. The no-sleep post is clearly based off of the image. Um, yeah, valid. But, yeah, so, I mean, what we're looking at here, it's uh, bipedal, humanoid proportions, um, looks to be wearing some form of headdress. Uh, that's, that's about all there is to go off of but yeah that's uh that's kind of where i've netted out on this one i think that we're looking at a just basically a, a hoax maybe mm. um publicity stunt. but if it were to be something else and I, I i just want to point out to any of my detractors that i do sometimes take the rational approach um i'm not you know i'm not going to pretend that i think this is something it isn't but the region of the united states that this is in is in fact uh, the the American Southwest. Amarillo mm. is in Northwest Texas, so it does fit in the area of the Athabascan peoples, the Southern Athabascan peoples, who at this point I have learned are pushing to go by the term Dine, which is the Athabascan word for it, rather than the Algonquin word. The Algonquin mm. uh, peoples described this group of nations as Athabascan because they came from around the Athabasca Lake. Yeah. Uh, the Algonquin, of course, live around the Canadian border with the United States. The Athabascan slash Dine people are originally from northwest Canada. Okay. And sometime uh, prior to the... Like Alberta or more north? Like all the way, the the entire western side of Canada. Okay, got it. Okay. Um, basically, yeah, like Northwest Territories, the Yukon, Alaska, like British Columbia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and... At some point, which is escaping me right now, mm. they actually did my a, a number of them migrated south. Mm. So whereas the uh, Ute Indians and mm. the Hopi are both, you uh, I think it was the term was Udo Ute Azteca or something like that. Um, basically, they're from the they're considered to be more of a uh, group spanning the northern Mexico mm. and southern United States area. Got it. Whereas the Navajo and the Apache. Their ancestors are actually from north of the current U.S. Canadian border, and they moved down south and set up a community down there. There's okay. also Athabascan Dine peoples from the Pacific Northwest who mm -hmm. are also transplants from Canada. Interesting. So people might be familiar, however, with some of the groups that these guys are related to. Mm -hmm. So there's the northern, southern, and Pacific Coast Athabascan peoples. The southern includes familiar names like the Navajo and the Apache, while the northern includes names like the Clinket, which our viewers might remember from our video on the Kushtaka, the Otter Man, mm. which is also a shape-shifting being that I'm practices sorry. mimicry. I'm just remembering the cold open that you did for that video. I can't remember what it was. You better port lock up your Kush Tush <laughs> Did I really say that? Yeah. I can't remember what the second half was, but that was... I just remember struggling to hold in the laughter yeah. when you dropped that one on an hour. Anyway. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah, so, and then the other, the other one that stuck out to me, the other name of the Nathabascan group, mm -hmm. Nahani. Oh, really? The Nahani River Valley. Mm -hmm. Those are Athabascan people, and of course, what do they have stories about? Pale-faced demons that roam the wilderness behaving in animalistic ways. So, between the Kushtaka, the Skinwalker, mm -hmm. the uh, pale-faced demons of mm -hmm. the Nahani River Valley... I'm sensing a trend in storytelling here yeah. of shape-shifting witches and mm -hmm. things like that that hunt people at night yep. in Athabascan territories. Uh, another thing I found interesting was that the Ute people don't have their own skinwalker tradition, but they are very much afraid of the Navajo skinwalker tradition. Mm. So there's a whole bunch there. The, the Ute and the Navajo uh, fought together a bunch of times, and they fought against each other a bunch of times. And the removal of the Navajo from the Uinta Basin mm -hmm. in Utah yep. 
the, the permanent removal, mm. actually does have a lot to do with the Ute tribes uh, siding with the United States military and pushing the Navajo out, mm. which resulted in the Navajo version of the Trail of Tears, where they had to go all the way southeast to uh, Arizona and New Mexico. Okay. But yeah, we've got a number of things. We've got uh, the, the, the Kushtaka in the Clinket mythology. We've got the Skinwalkers in the Navajo and the Apache. Um, and for skinwalkers, for those who are not aware of the actual lore here, what we're dealing with is evil medicine men who practice shape-shifting for dark purposes. Because in Navajo culture, shape-shifting is not a uh, inherent negative. Yeah. It is instead a very common cultural practice and what the Navajo believe, and I got this from uh, this NavajoNation.org, I think, uh, or NavajoPeoples.org. Mm. It, was, it was a Navajo site. Um, what I got was their definition of shape-shifting does not necessarily match what a European might think when that term is used. Mm. So Europeans and European-Americans, when we think shape-shifter, we think like werewolf, mm. something like that. They think more, uh, it, again, putting this in terms that Europeans and European-Americans will understand because that is the majority of our audience. They're thinking something closer to like berserkers or Ulfhednar, which were the... Uh, Norse warriors who would dress up in pelts and get themselves high on psychedelics and put themselves into the mental state of the wolf or the bear or something like that. I would love to... If, what is there a show that shows that? Vikings. Does it? Mm -hmm. I gotta start watching Vikings. Vikings is actually really good. You should is just it? watch Vikings. Yeah, that's fair. You, know, yeah. what, you know what show but, I just started... Just as a quick side note. Sure. What show I just started watching that's kind of up our alley that I had the ending spoiled for me technically, but I was like, I might as well give it a rip. Lost. Oh, yeah, I've had the ending spoiled, too. But I think I might want to watch it. We should do that. I, I'm on episode, like, six Ooh, right now. Lost Watch Party in the Discord? Ooh, that'd be fun. That would be fun. I can say, I, I was surprisingly impressed the first two episodes that a show that I already had spoiled for me had mysteries that were good. Yeah. Even in just the first episode, I was like, all right, I'm going to give it a rip. Yeah, I've I'm watched, like, the that. first three, and they... Even if you know what happens at the end, the way they set it up is entertaining. Oh, it's a good yeah. show. The, the yeah. writing's really good. And there's still other interesting, like, mysteries about the characters themselves. So, like, yeah. it's really cool. Yeah, because I know what happens to everybody. I don't know, like, the story of how they get there. Exactly. Um, which I'm happy to learn. I'm happy to watch. Yes. I, I cannot remember what I was talking about, though. Yes, uh, shape-shifting. Yes. So, the, the Native American version of shape-shifting in many cases, and again, this isn't universal to all Native American tribes, but... When they just dress up in headdresses or they wear the uh, pelt of an animal or something mm. like that, and they put themselves into a headspace, their goal is to adopt the characteristics of that creature. Okay. So if they're, uh, you don't see dressing in predatory skins as much with the Navajo culture, mm. but for example, the Cherokee uh, will dress in wolf pelts. Mm -hmm. And the goal for that would be if you are hunting in a group then everybody would want to shapeshift into the wolf mm. because they're pack hunters. Yeah. And the idea is that you're going to take on the attributes and the instincts of that creature and use it to your own advantage. Yeah. Now, when you're doing that for the purpose of hunting to feed your family or scouting for a war party mm. or something like that, that's an acceptable use of shapeshifting in uh, these in these cultures. Mm. What is not an acceptable use of shapeshifting is doing it to harm people in your own tribe, to advance your own personal gain at the expense of others. If it's a tribal action, a war party, something like that, you might see, you know, a little bit more acceptability for using this for violence. Yeah. But when it comes to stuff that shouldn't be violent, using it against your own tribe, that's very frowned upon, that's very taboo. And part of the difficulty that I've been having with researching this subject, by the way, is that it is a very closed culture in a lot of ways about this. Uh, I have had Navajo creators and uh, folklorists and whatnot who have been willing to talk to me about it. Mm -hmm. But even then, I don't get quite the full story, and I can only sometimes back-check myself. Uh, for example, one thing I saw is that you have to be initiated by an elder mm. who is already one of them. Mm. And then that's how you begin the process, and that process involves killing somebody close to you, uh, often a family member, something like that. Yeah. Um, what I wow. what I can't get a confirmation on, but I think might be a uh, total creation of pop culture, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm a little mad at myself because I fell for it, mm -hmm. is the, the cannibalism. Oh, really? The cannibalism seems to not be original to the Navajo version of the story. Mm -hmm. um, it might be original to the Apache version, I don't know, but mm -hmm. uh, I, it's hard to find the Apache and... Um, other Athabascan versions of this because 
It's just not. Monopoly as... one is just so prevalent. Yeah. Um, I looked a lot, but I'm probably gonna have to like go to a university library if I want to get to the bottom of that one. Um, yeah, this, that'd be a time. Yeah, but I think I, I did want to draw the the, con- the comparisons because a lot of the Skinwalker mythology talks about uh, mimicry and their ability to get inside your head and how they're more of uh, trapping predators than they are hunters and stalkers. Mm-hmm. So they more would like to lure you into a place where they can take you down easily. All of that fits very well with, with the Clinket peoples, who themselves are not totally Athabascan. They're just a related group, mm. uh, kind of in the way that what what I'm sensing from is that it seems to be that they're uh, related to Athabascans in the same way that the Irish would be related to the Welsh. Okay, got it. Or the Norse would be related to the Germans. They're from a similar group, but they're not quite the same. Um, actually, the, the Irish and Welsh one is probably the more apt comparison. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the Kushtaka, anthropomorphic otter that uses mimicry to lure people to the water so it can tear them to shreds and eat them, can appear human, and cries or wails like a baby or a woman. Skinwalker, very similar, likes to lure you into the forest using the voice of somebody close to you, your mother, your sister, your daughter, um, usually, you know, somebody that you would feel an urge to protect them, and then will do whatever it plans to do with you. Mm. In my research, I also did come across the Navajo creation story, which I want to point out something cool, because mm. I love when cultures intersect, especially ones that were not communicating with each other, when they happen to have their crossover. I'm interested in where this is going, because I have a thought. The Navajo creation story the involves uh, two, two creations. The first one takes place in a smaller world that mm. is this kind of idyllic paradise. Mm-hmm. And the first man and the first woman are created into that world and then eventually forced to leave it. Um, mm. Again, that's not the entire, that's not a detailed account of it, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I'm giving the, what that's similar to, as we all know, is yeah. Adam and Eve. Yeah, the broad so I just think yeah. that's very cool that those two, like the Jewish culture and the Navajo culture, so like completely disconnected. Yeah. They're, they, these two, a Jewish person would not meet a Navajo person for thousands and thousands of years after these stories originated yeah so i think it's very cool that they have that similarity it is what was the second part um what do you mean oh, i thought that you said there was two parts to the creation story yeah the second part i haven't really read up on yet oh but got it I, I thought you were going to say that there was something involving a flood in the oh they do have a flood myth okay yeah, yeah. they all have flood myths yeah um my it's guess sure. with the with the native americans is that their flood myth is related to no water pulse one being um because glaciers covered a large portion of North America, and if they all melted rapidly because of a meteor impact or something like that, that would be a flood. Yeah. Um, and it would have been a continental flood, not just a flood on the waterways. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was interesting. Well, yeah. Um, but, of course, as I dove into all of this, something had to come up. A certain ranch in Utah. Ah. And... Um, this one, I we haven't talked about it on the podcast in a while, but I am uh, I'm excited because this one's a lot of fun. Hmm. We're just gonna go through the story of Skimwalker Ranch here. All right, <laughs> um, fair enough. Not in a ton of detail. Uh, there will be some detail. I'm gonna pull up the uh, Skimwalker Ranch story from Legends of America because I love that website. Yeah, I'm looking at it on Google Maps right now. So, Skinwalker Ranch. Located in the Uintah Basin, an area that historically, according to the Ute peoples, is on the path of the Skinwalker. And the Navajo, I can't find a source for this, but it seems that the Ute peoples believe that when they helped the United States take the land from the Navajo and got it in return, only to, of course, be pushed out themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of Ute people still live there, but I don't believe it's uh, Ute Nation territory. Got it. Um, they believe that after the Navajo po- after the Navajo were pushed out in 1863, that they cursed the land, and that it is now overrun with skinwalkers, and the skinwalkers hang out in a place called the Dark Canyon, and that that's the story here. This uh, I I found somewhere that they believe goes back 15 generations um, that skinwalkers have been there, but that wouldn't fit the timeline very well. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think we have 15 generations between 1863 and now, um, anywhere near that actually. So maybe half as many. So 
regardless of that, what the Ute report is large black hairy humanoids with large coal red eyes. I assume coal red means like burning coals. Probably, yeah. Um, and there were a lot of very strange things cited on this property in the 90s. Mm-hmm. Um, the 90s, of course, being a very strange time for everyone involved. But... I want to go through the ownership here because it was originally owned by the Myers family and they lived there from 1934 to 1994. That is important because they never reported anything. Okay. However, to my understanding, when the house was sold to the Sherman family in 1994, Mm -hmm. one thing they thought was odd was that there were locks on all the doors. Like deadbolt locks on all the doors. Mm. Every door in the house. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. So, clearly, there was a reason that those were put there. And I think that there's a possibility that just because the Myers family did not report anything does not mean they didn't experience anything. Yeah. Because, of course, we're, th- we're talking here about the 1930s. People who would have been adults in the 1930s. Yeah. Different time. If you went around telling the media that uh, your home was being invaded by beings from other dimensions in the 1930s. Probably not going to be well received. Also, no. you're looking at, you, you were talking about Utah. I wasn't able to confirm if these were Mormons or not, but um, mm. just probably not going to be the kind of community that's going to be receptive to that kind of thing. So no. it might be better to keep your mouth shut or you might at least see it that way and believe that. Yeah. So anyway, the Myers sold it to the Shermans in 1994. And that is when the first widely reported disturbances began. So what we've got here, uh, I'm going to scroll down to the recent section of it. So the very day that the Sherman family took possession, the family spotted a, and this is from legendsofamerica.com, Skinwalker Ranch. The very day they took possession, the family spotted a large coyote or wolf in one of their pastures, which soon approached, making its way to a livestock pen. Then grabbed a calf by the nose, trying to drag it through the corral bars. Terry Sherman and his father then began to beat the animal to make it release the calf, but were unsuccessful. The story here goes that they shot it a number of times, they beat it, and it just wouldn't die, and eventually walked away. Mm. Uh, No sign of blood, and they follow the tracks for about a mile, and then they they end. As if this thing Mm. just disappeared into another dimension. Yeah. One bit of skinwalker lore that I've heard, but I haven't confirmed with a a native source is that skinwalkers can travel the astral plane, that they can uh, enter portals, go into other dimensions, and travel that way. Yep. I've also seen stuff that they can... Um, it suggests that they can uh, take over your mind by looking into your eyes, something like that. Yeah, there's some, there's some pretty wild powers that get involved here. Yeah, clearly. Um, but that's not where things stop. Uh, Gwen Sherman mm-hmm. encountered a wolf that was so large that it's back was parallel with the top window of her car so that's at least like four and a half five feet tall roughly if it's a sedan. Yeah. um over the next couple of years because the shermans actually only owned the property from 1994 to 1996 the story makes it seem like they were there from like the 70s yeah um they weren't but over the next awesome. couple of years uh the shermans and their neighbors importantly reported a number of strange animals in the area including exotic multicolored birds not native to the region and tall, dark beasts that resembled a Bigfoot or Sasquatch. They saw hyena-like creatures attack their horses. Um, They saw beings emerge, like, tall, black beings emerge from portals um, and just walk off places. Yeah. Uh, Weren't there, I can't remember if you said this already, but the orbs as well? Yeah, the orbs are one of the last things to happen. Yeah. Um, They saw strange lights. A lot of people suggested UFO activity. Um, One of the dead cows had a hole in the center of its left eyeball which is just weird. Um, yeah. Six-inch hole uh, carved out of its rectum, which is just weird. Um, the last cow to be killed and mutilated had been seen alive by the Sherman's son just five minutes earlier. It had a six-inch wide, 18-inch deep hole cored out of its rectum that extended into the body cavity. Yeah. All right, then. So, there's... People are like, you can't just say these words. <laughs> yeah, like you did. <laughs> but apparently, so apparently even before the Shermans, cattle mutilations were a known phenomenon in the area, mm-hmm. which was attributed to, by the Ute people to skinwalkers, uh, not necessarily by the other locals. 
I don't know what else that would be. I but. mean, it's just based off of things that I've heard over time, that sounds more like alien behavior. Mm-hmm. At least the way it's described by, I don't know, people who are in that community. Yeah. But. Mm. Well, there's also the fact that no blood was found in any of these cases. Um, no, no real signs of trauma outside of the actual wound. It seems almost surgical. I was going to uh, say, what have we got? Some vampirical yeah. They reported, Skinwalkers. yeah, they reported that a chemical odor was apparent, um, but no footprints, no tire tracks, just no no explanation for how these things got there. No. Which would, of course, imply that either it was lifted off the ground from the air, mm-hmm. or that the surgery was performed right there. With the one cow uh, that had been seen five minutes before it was found dead, mm-hmm. there's no way that somebody got that close to it, did what it did, and then left. No shot. So, you know, what happens? Well, as as you know, you've heard me talk about it a number of times. Yes. Um, the Celts believed that time was a spiral mm-hmm. and that you could step in and out of it. The Navajo the uh, and just other Native American peoples in general had beliefs that have beliefs that there are certain points in the world where you can go and slip in and out of our dimension. Yep. So perhaps interdimensionality is, a, is at play here. Um, Potentially, for sure. Yeah. One of the cattle that disappeared uh, seemed to have magically been lifted from the snow. The hoof prints led into a field and then just stopped. Interesting. Ground was littered with broken twigs and branches, and the tops of the trees appeared to have been cut off. Now, I will say the the UFO stuff is very interesting to me. Okay. Um, especially because of the timing. But I, I don't think there's any hard evidence of it. Mm-hmm. Um, other strange events, uh, pastures would unexplicably light up at night, could hear heavy machinery that sounded like it was underground. Um, yeah, that one's interesting to me. Yeah. All sorts of really weird stuff. Uh, according to legends of America.com, the final straw occurred one evening in May of 1996 when Sherman was outside with three of his dogs. This is the story about the orbs. Okay. Orb darting around the field and then goes into the woods. The dogs chase after it. And when Mm. he eventually, when he eventually sees the orbs disappear, he finds just three piles of ash, not actual dogs. So oh. they appear to have been vaporized. Well, that's not great. Yeah. Uh, this website says he found only three round, greasy lumps. Ew. Yeah. So, weird. Uh, yeah, gross. There, there were earlier investigations into UFO sightings in the area. This is not. This was not new to okay. the, the Sherman ownership. Okay. But the extent to which it was reported seems to be new to the Sherman ownership. Yeah. In 1996, the ranch was sold to Robert Bigelow, who began hiring researchers under what he called the National Institute for Discovery of Science. The National Institute for Discovery of Science was not actually a federal program. Mm -hmm. It was his program. Okay. They researched it for several years, but eventually had to shut down in 2004 due to a lack of apparent success. They couldn't find, they supposedly couldn't find anything. Okay. But I don't buy that because what happened next was that Bigelow was able to start up another uh, group that Mm -hmm. um, he called, I have it in my notes somewhere, the Bigelow Aerospace Advanced Space Studies Program. Okay. Which was more secretive than NIDS was. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but the ranch got an influx of cash. Aiden, do you want to guess where the influx of cash came from? The government? The U.S. government. Mm. Senate Democrats, under then-majority leader Henry Reid, Mm -hmm. decided that Bigelow and his organization might be onto something. So they founded the Advanced Aviation Threat Identification Program, which was a uh, defense intelligence agency program okay. that was given $22 million over the course of five years between 2007 and 2012 okay. to research uh, unexplained phenomena in general, mm-hmm. but primarily focusing on Skinwalker Ranch okay. and the UFOs, which at the time this was still just called the Sherman Ranch. Yeah. Um, but to research UFOs and paranormal stuff and all that. I am interested in the fact that 
oddly enough, particularly it seems like it's the Democrats, yeah. were very interested in UFO technology and finding out what was going on there. Mm-hmm. It makes me wonder what they actually knew, what they're actually aware of, um, mm-hmm. you know, if there was any government operation going on there. Yeah. The machinery thing, I'm not sure who else could possibly be operating machinery underground at that level but the government. Yeah. Um, you know, of course, it is possible that there is some sort of bunker down there. Yeah, but, it'd be, but it'd be very weird and very difficult for a private citizen to do that. Yeah. Uh, on top of that, during the 2016 presidential race, the emails, as you all know, the WikiLeaks emails from Hillary Clinton's private server, mm. um, they revealed one thing that I read myself, because when those emails came out, I read through a lot of them. Mm-hmm. One that struck me was Tom DeLonge of Blink-182 mm-hmm. and John Podesta. Hillary Clinton's campaign chief of staff, the man who would have been chief of staff if she won, like Mm -hmm. one of the closest advisors to the president. Yeah. We're going to leave out all the other weird stuff from those emails, which includes like stuff that appears to be satanic blood rituals. Um, I'm not (laughs) saying they are. I'm just saying when I read what they're talking about, it kind of seems like a satanic blood ritual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... I don't know, YouTube, again, allegedly. I'm just reporting what was in the documents. Allegedly. Oh, um, God. I'm not saying Hillary Clinton was performing satanic blood rituals. I'm just saying I wouldn't be surprised. Mm, <laughs> fair enough. Wouldn't be surprised if anyone in government was performing satanic blood rituals. Power does weird things to people, man. Yeah, it um, does. So, what was revealed in these emails between Tom DeLonge and John Podesta is that they planned to... Just release all the information they had about UFOs. Oh, that's right. Um, they wanted to do that. Well, this was after the Navy released their information no, on it, right? This was before that because really? that was made public in 2017 okay. by the Trump Pentagon. Right. Mm-hmm. Which is, is interesting, isn't it? Another thing that's interesting is that in his resignation letter to my cousin, then Secretary of Defense James Mattis... Uh, the Advanced Aviation Threat Identification Program head Luis, uh, or it might be Luis, but Luis Elizondo stated that he believed there was compelling evidence we may not be alone. Those were his findings from his five years and his $22 million was, I don't think we're alone. The public isn't taking this seriously. I don't know what to do. Uh, initially when the program was shut down in 2012, it was shuttered because they couldn't justify yeah spending the money to the public that was their reasoning at least uh considering they're they have been able to justify billions of dollars to complete nonsense yeah i think that sounds like bs i think they shut the program down for another reason or the program was just continuing in secret and i gotta be honest continuing in secret sounds more likely to me because in 2016 before any of this was released, Mm -hmm. the company was, or the the property was bought by Adamantium Holdings. What's Adamantium? It's the metal in the Marvel Universe Mm -hmm. that Wolverine is able to cut through anything with, whatever, yeah. Yep. Interesting name for a shell company that you're using to buy property that has a history of paranormal occurrences, is it not? It is. It's it's a very weird choice. Mm -hmm. Unless you're trying to be wink wink nod nod subtle about what you may or may not be wanting to do i'm trying to remember the the name of the guy who happened to be behind it um starts with a b if you want to look it up but uh if you look up skinwalker ranch it's on the wikipedia page uh but yeah so adamantium holdings adamantium real estate llc which is of course a uh delaware licensed corporation Mm -hmm. because delaware has no rules um it's the only it's the only redeeming factor of Delaware's existence yeah. uh, is that they have no sales tax and that they they just uh, will Brandon let go Fugel. Brandon Fugel. So, Brandon Fugel is the actual guy behind Adamantium Holdings. The second this place was bought by Adamantium Holdings, mm-hmm. private security. More intense private security than ever before. The entire property was fenced in. Private security full time and all the rights this, this guy, uh, what was his name, Brandon Fugel? Fugel yeah. Brandon Fugel and Adamantium Holdings get all the rights to merchandise and licensing for TV shows and movies and documentaries. Seems like all he has to do is uh, keep people off the property without permission. Yeah. So I wonder if there was a deal struck between the federal government 
and Adamantium Holdings, or perhaps Adamantium Holdings was just a federal government shell company in the first place Mm -hmm. that was created for the sole purpose of purchasing this land to give a valid reason why people weren't allowed on it and to put up that much security. Because if the government came in, yeah, th- think think about it. If the U.S. Air Force came in, seized the land, put up fences, had all sorts of what is that the guy? Yeah. Oh, he looks like a government stooge. <laughs> um, so if he uh, if if the Air Force came in, set up all of this fencing, set up all of this security, and just wouldn't let people anywhere near the property, yeah, people would ask questions. Same as Area Fifty One. But if a private company mm-hmm. comes in and buys the land and starts uh, running tours and selling merchandise and licensing TV shows. Yeah. Well, then it's just capitalism, baby. I'm not going to lie. The way that Wikipedia describes it, they're making it out to sound like the, as though he did it for a cash grab mm-hmm. because he started copywriting everything related to Skinwalker Ranch, including, like, T-shirt and mm-hmm. mug rights and, like, the, the, the reason for it was the ability to produce multimedia things. So mm-hmm. essentially, like, the reason for the security and all that is so that way... They can prevent anybody who's trying to make money off of it from doing so unless they go through him, which like, which yeah, is a valid, great, get that bread, bro. great front. Yeah, for the government continuing its own research there. Oh no doubt. So again, real- this this is obviously conspiratorial. I understand yeah. that, but it just it strikes me as very odd. The real question comes down to whether or not it's capitalistic or conspiratorial. Is how easy. And how many people have gotten access to it since he's bought the land? Nobody has gotten access to the stuff that people actually want to investigate. They won't let you dig. Oh. They'll let you dig in designated areas. So what I think is happening is I think that Adamantium Holdings mm-hmm. bought the land with a deal from the federal government mm-hmm. that they could get all the licensing rights. They just had to put up a facade mm-hmm. that the reason this land is off limits is because it's privately owned. Yep. And the reason all that security is there is because, well, now somebody's put a lot of money into it. Now it's no longer just a ranch that's owned and that people are doing research on. Now it's, this is a, this is a business. Yeah. And you've got to protect the business and you've got to make sure that nobody is sneaking onto the property and, and, you know, taking away from your rightfully earned money. Right. Yeah. And all the while, because the front is that it's a private business, government can do whatever they want there. Yeah. So... The chat is welcome to tell me if I sound crazy here, but I think this is one of the most plausible conspiracy theories I've ever reported on. I mean, the way everything's laid out, it does sound pretty cut and dry. Yeah, it's totally possible. It doesn't confirm or deny any of the existences of what has been reported to exist on the property, Mm -hmm. but the potential for this story related to the current ability to access the property for the public makes a lot of sense exactly i just think it's if if i were at the pentagon and somebody came to me and said we need to make sure that people can't get on this property so we continue to so we can continue to research it but we don't yeah. want anybody to be suspicious that's the plan i would come up with you got to wonder what else the government has done that with oh probably so many things yeah <laughs> like I mean, it's a very quick, easy, and intelligent way to keep people out of what you want them to be in, or want them to be out of. Well, when uh, the government set aside a whole bunch of land and put it under federal ownership and cordoned off areas that you're not allowed to go to that are unmarked on the maps and you find out you're not allowed to be there when the rangers show up and tell you you're not supposed to be there, people got suspicious. So, how else can you do it? Private industry. Yep. And... The way corporations became a thing in the first place, I don't know how many people know this. It's kind of a little tidbit about American business history. Mm -hmm. The first corporations in U.S. history were like bridge building companies that would incorporate and work to incorporate meant that you were like becoming a essentially a government business. Uh, You were were given a monopoly on something in exchange for service to the community. Interesting. So in, serv- in in exchange, by the way, to give a business a monopoly on something because it benefits the state, there's a word for that. It's fascism. Um, yeah. Theodore Rose or not Theodore Roosevelt, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt mm. did a lot of that. Um, mm. Just to remind people that the 
uh, most popular president in U.S. history was proto Hitler. Um, also to remind, will. also to remind everybody how much Mattis dislikes FDR. I do not like FDR. You, I, we should probably do a video yeah. on FDR also, as to why you know you don't I like him. I genuinely don't think that I'm not making a political video. Um, <laughs> I genuinely don't think that the New Deal would work today because I, I just, I, I just don't think it would. I don't um, even remember the particulars of the New Deal. What he did was he hired unemployed civilians for massive construction projects, and I don't think you could convince 2022 Americans to do that. No. Um, the New Deal is not a replicable thing. Also, like, OSHA wouldn't let it happen. No, it would not. <laughs> they say bring out the Bork Bork, so I guess. Come here. There we go. <laughs> That's a good boy. Also, somebody he said that they wanted appearance. you to do a video on Waterloo at some point. Waterloo? Yeah. Like the Battle of Waterloo? I believe so. Might have to bring back the history hut, I suppose. Might. Um, so, that's about all I have for, for the actual content of the show. Well, uh, I think that we'll head over to, to question time yeah. to remind people. Um, I know we've hit the $250 goal for the month. I have to do the math on the rest of it. Uh, so you guys are getting Screamo Bob the Builder. Uh, <laughs> the musical track for that was kindly provided by Kalen Kennedy, I believe, was his last name. I believe so, yes. Um, and it honestly, it slaps. Oh, no, it's, it's really, really good. really good. If you weren't here last, was it last week that we showed uh, Yeah, it was yeah, last it's, week. it's um, really good. That's something that I will probably be able to come out with. Uh, I don't think we have a show for a little while after this weekend, so I can blow out my voice if I choose to. Um, oh, you mean for... Yeah, for All You Had to Say. For... By the way, my band is called All You Had to Say. You can follow us on Instagram. Um, yeah. <laughs> Do you have one coming up this coming weekend? We have or was last Friday. Week? Okay, yeah. cool. Where uh, is it? Molly's. Oh, cool. Yeah, so if you're in the Phoenixville or just the su- southeastern Pennsylvania area and you want to come see my band play, we're going to play at uh, Molly McGuire's in Phoenixville, Pennsylvania. That on I Friday may night. actually have to do or be yeah. able to do because I'll be out here again And you can hang stuff. with Thorn Bussy. He'll yeah. sign autographs. Yes. You can buy him drinks. He's very fun when he's drunk. Why does everybody keep saying that? You know who else was fun? Oh. Tommy. Dude, okay. It's so much fun. If I hadn't crashed like a madman last night, I would have you loved sh- to have just seen Tommy. I wish could have been there. Is he going to be there that... Oh, have him come He's out He's here for the next... Uh, yeah, I'm trying to get him to come. If you're going, he'll probably go. All right, cool. I uh, Yeah, oh, there he is. Yeah, we loved it. Um, it was hilarious. Yeah, it was great. I, you, I don't know if we'll put that on Spotify, but if we do, you're absolutely getting a writing credit. Um, <laughs> yes. Because you did arrange it. Uh, yeah, but for $500 for donation goals, um, full face of makeup done live on stream. Cat will give me a makeover. There we go. Uh, for 750 uh, I will gather my Phoenixville buddies, um, like my bar friends and whatnot, and collect roasts from them, which Aiden will read. Mm. Uh, and for $1,000, we will make a 10 to 15 minute short film that is a romantic comedy about somebody falling in love with the Wendigo. You realize if we do that, that thousand dollars is just gonna go to the budget for the film. Yeah. Oh God. Um, oh hey PJ, I I don't know how long you've been here, but I hope you heard me uh, <laughs> plug the band. Um, PJ is our drummer. Oh nice. Uh, <laughs> he's hanging. Um, so yes, of course, Arson, you will get your thank you for keeping track. But yeah, so those are the donation goals. Uh, if you'd like to donate and make me embarrass myself, go for it. That is how we fund the show. <laughs> That's how we keep making money is uh, apparently not the content. It's no. me hurting myself uh, <laughs> for laughs. Well, you keep offering it's very it very slapstick. I think here. people at this point just want to see how far they can push you. Yeah, it's fair enough. But yeah, so if y'all have questions, we will answer Super Chats first. We will answer other questions uh, if we can get to them. But that's uh, that's about it. Yeah, we had a few super chats earlier on the. Road Chaos time. says, "Aiden, do you enjoy being my only good father figure?" Uh, that's a little bit salad. I'm a little young to be your dad. I said, but salad I guess Happy Father's salad. Day to me. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> you might have some calls that you should make. <laughs> um, hiding and playing right from Mithrin for two hours. I, I'm not sure. I think you meant sight. Or, or one of us yeah. might have said that instead of saying, so I, I don't know. I said it's to all messages, but I can't see. Uh, yeah, I can't. I know there were two know there earlier. Were two the beginning, but for uh, some reason, they're not showing up right now. For the Hi, baby. How are you? Uh, for those oh, who wow. sent in questions earlier, thank you. Um, I, I oh, cannot. Yeah, no, I can only get so far. Up yeah, there. we can only scroll back so far now, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Well, no, there's a way to see him. Hang on. Uh, we oh, just gotta bring Dexter up. Morgan is watching, uh, watching us. Oh. Can you confirm my suspicion that skinwalkers are just ancient Navajo furries? <laughs> well, I, I'm not totally against that explanation, not the furry part, but the uh, the idea of, you know, it's a costume that you would wear to put yourself into a specific mental state so that you could continue to, um, you know, 
bring on the aspects and the the instincts of that animal. I think yeah. I, I think there is a very strong and interesting connection between Norse and Native American practices in that that sense. Look at what look at what Benjamin Smith said right underneath. Will that. there be a range at the lodge? Yes. Re- re- Reactive targets. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> yeah. um, if we can ever afford it, I'm still upset. I'm still salty about that actual like old ski lodge. It used to be a it used to be a ski lodge that like slept sixty. Where Happy Valley? Um. There was an old ski lodge we could have bought for two million. Oh yes, because we in have state that college. Money. So mad. Aw, thanks, PJ. You rock too. <laughs> I know. Uh, um. Yeah, but uh, that's uh, that's Thank that. Thank you, PJ. <laughs> uh, is that not what a furry does? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I suppose, yeah. Stop eating Dude, my furries scat. scare me, man. Yeah. Oh, huh. Have you seen Internet Historian's video on Rainforest? No. Oh. Rain, wait, rain what? Rainforest. Yeah, We're I watching that before like we that. record tonight. I don't like Rainforest. <laughs> it's... It's actually really entertaining. Let's see if we can pull up. Uh, OMFG section says, I sent you a message on Discord. If you head up to NY again for Tom Messick, reach out. I can help you with transportation, trail maps, and a place to stay. All right. Thank you very much. If we do have a chance to get back up there, we did love it up there. Yeah, we want to go. Absolutely Um, go again. Yeah. 10 out of 10 would go again. I'm not sure where the other uh, chats were, because they were definitely here. Um, No, that's insert. You're doing very well today. Um, apparently you can just insert ads into your stream at random times. That's something that we're learning. Well, we don't want to do that. <laughs> I know there's a way to go see older Super Chats. I've just got to find it. Um, yep. I think it's under monetization. If anybody has any other questions or anything random like that, feel free to send current ones while we search for the uh, old ones. Dr. Glorfindel said, my Super Chat from the beginning of the show is just saying hi and toss a coin to your Aidens. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Glorfindel. <laughs> yes. I appreciate Thank you. Thank you again for that. Um, supers. Ah, there it is. Uh, Brandy Huber for $5 said, it's an amaryllis. <laughs> <laughs> Plaz said, be sure to tell Wendigoon happy Father's Day. <laughs> oh, jeez. Is that a, is that an inside uh, joke that I'm not familiar with? Let's see. Um, what? Is this, uh, oh, that's from here. last week. That's from last week. It's from, okay. Um, all right, cool. You don't want that. What? Is for a ten dollar said, you know the drill, Archie must know we love him. Boop the boy snoot. Boop. <laughs> what? It's just really aggressive. It wasn't aggressive, I was just like boop, boop, boop. No, I know, but just like the way his head recoiled and just but he didn't even <laughs> register it. What? Hi, I know. Uh Dude. pretty boy, the hair looks glorious. Mattis, I don't know what nice thing to say to you, I'm not that creative. <laughs> Oof. Oh my god. <laughs> that hurts my soul. Oh. It is firing off rounds here. Good <laughs> lord. We're not even at the range yeah. yet. Kellen Data says, thoughts on Balder being the Christian god and Loki is the devil. I have seen that TikTok going around and we're living yes. post Ragnarok. Also, any chance to turn the background animation into a Rainstorm ASMR video to sleep to? I mean, I guess we technically could. I guess we, we could probably just have a running, like, thunderstorm yeah. Live stream. Just send me the loop yeah. of the video, and I'll, I'll, I guess, next thunderstorm that exists, I'll, I need to record it. can't monetize it, so it would have to be a live stream so people can just super chat to support it. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Um, so my thoughts on Balder and and the uh, the Loki devil thing. So I think the comparison, I, I think there are fair bits of the comparison, but I think a lot of the story doesn't totally hold up. Um, there aren't really enough similarities between Baldur and the Christian God. I, there are enough similarities between Loki and Satan. I will give you that. I, if, if your argument was to be that Satan and Loki are the same figure in two different religions, that, that I can vibe with. Uh, it would also make complete sense that Loki would go somewhere very far away from the Jews or that Satan would go somewhere very far away from the Jews. Yeah, that's fair. You know, tell them that he is God. That, or that he's a god, or create some sort of story. Mm. Um, that would totally be something Satan would do. Uh, as for 
the post Ragnarok thing, that's actually the case. Ragnarok is not a prophecy so much as it is a cycle. Um, oh right. Yeah. A lot of people believe that Ragnarok is something that's going to happen in the future, when in reality, Ragnarok is something that has already happened mm -hmm. um, and will happen again and again and again. Yeah. That's how a lot of Norse and Celtic literature works. How a lot of Which their storytelling makes more works. sense. Anyway. Yeah. However, as I think we discussed this last stream, mm -hmm. um, the way Ragnarok is described as being there's a great fire that destroys all these things mm -hmm. and then a great flood which washes away the fire and the world is reborn anew mm -hmm. that uh that is basically what the people in that region of the world in the northern region of the world would have experienced uh during meltwater pulse 1b if it was caused by a meteor impact mm. there would have been probably a lot of fire and then a very very catastrophic flood mm -hmm. and then Life will be reborn anew. Of course, once again, in the Ragnarok story, mm -hmm. what is left over afterwards? A god figure um, and two human beings. Yep. Who take shelter inside Yggdrasil, the world, the, the universal tree mm -hmm. that holds the nine realms. And then they leave Yggdrasil, which is outside of the realm of man, and go out into the world. So once again, we have two people who go out into the world. Yeah. Recurring theme here. Um, so, you know, I, I just think it's, you know, we see this this motif of, of the first two humans emerging from some sort of protective natural state uh, yeah. over and over again. Problematic Farmer says, furry fund for $9.99. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. Let's see. Uh, Mithrin for, I believe that means Australian $5. Uh we large love the Aussies. wolves and uh, dogs in a lot of these. So, large wolves and dogs in a lot of these. From so many of these are introducing any thoughts. Can you, can you repeat that? I'm struggling to understand. I think generally it's large wolves and dogs in a lot of these stories probably uh, are introducing many thoughts. Ah, that's generally yes. how I would decode that. Um. Well, let's see, uh, Michaela Creative says, so far as the Amarillo Crypt is concerned, do y'all think it's real or a hoax? Right now, I'm leaning towards publicity stunt. Yeah. Um, personally, it looks a little too much like that Skinwalker depiction, which is the first one that comes up on Google. It's either a hoax or somebody was trying really hard to be a Skinwalker and just somehow got caught. Caught on camera. Or, like, maybe they were trying to be a Skinwalker and, like, do some furry things Who at the zoo. Oh, God. So... I hate that. They were trying to be friends with the animals because they wanted to be one. <laughs> Mattis, I don't know what you think a boop is, but that was not it. <laughs> yeah, I laughed very hard is his comment earlier that said, I said boop, not attack, in all caps. Yeah. It was very entertaining. Uh, Adam Brewer says, I wonder if Loki was just very Christianized and demonized when Christians converted the Norse so that they had the devil figure. So the Norse conversion is a very interesting and somewhat unique one. The early converts to Christianity from the Norse peoples did so in England and they did it for a number of reasons. For some, it was political. Mm -hmm. There were situations where the English were going to win, mm -hmm. but the English were willing to allow a peace agreement if the Norse converted to Christianity. Mm -hmm. So in some cases, that was what happened. Mm -hmm. uh, that happened a lot with uh, the great heathen army in 868 uh, and so on. And then there were uh, people like Olaf Tryggvason, who's the first um, Christian king of Norway, and mm. St. Olaf, who's one of his descendants. Um, yeah. You know, all these different characters. St. Olaf, of course, is directly related to Harald Hadrada. Mm. Um, and there was some violent conversion in those cases, but in a lot of cases for Norse people, the Norse religion did not rule out the existence of the Christian god. A lot of pagan religions were henotheistic in the sense that they believed in their gods and also there were other gods. Their gods were just, in their opinion, stronger. Mm -hmm. So in some cases, there were Norse armies who fought the Christians and lost. And yeah. their only reasoning for that was, well, the Christian god must be stronger than ours. Yeah. And so some converted for that reason. Got it. Um, and then when you finally get the situation where the where Snorri is writing down the Norse sagas, mm -hmm. I have I have a mind to to.
believe that he was actually honest because the the Loki that we get um, in Marvel mm-hmm. and pop culture before he became a Marvel character uh, on the big screen was still a fiendish trickster, mm-hmm. but not necessarily in the evil sense. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's really the Marvel version that I think has a lot of people thinking of Loki as being evil, when really it's the later Marvel version of Loki that's much closer to the actual Norse character. Got it. Loki is uh, rarely described as evil because the thing about the Norse gods is that whereas in a lot of uh, you know Judeo-Christian and Abrahamic faiths and stuff like that, God is good. Mm. We're almost dualist in the sense that there is God which is good and that which is not God, God is not good. Um, it's not necessarily evil, but it's you could do better. Is yeah. essentially the way that the Christian theology works in that sense. Yeah. So, in Norse mythology, the gods are not inherently good. The gods have flaws. Mm-hmm. The gods are very human um, in, in a lot of ways. They have lust and greed, mm-hmm. and uh, they make mistakes, and they have pride. One of Thor's greatest downfalls is his pride. Mm-hmm. So, Loki is not necessarily evil. Yeah. Loki is also half Jotun. So he's not expected to be, you know, just chill yeah. with the gods. Yeah. So Loki's not an evil figure, and I don't honestly even read him as being demonized. Loki is a completely rational figure. Interesting. Um, let's see, what else do we got here? I do like History Daddy's theory of, uh, I'm 90% certain the Amarillo creature is a Crash Bandicoot <laughs> advert. I haven't seen a Crash Bandicoot game in years. Right? Do they make them uh, anymore? Someone correctly booped the fluffy baby. Okay, Archie, come here. Come hither. Does this look like a boy who does not enjoy the way I booped him? Hey, Archie, look at me. Boop. How's that? I better. You're a good boy. All right. But I think that brings us to uh, about the end of the show. We appreciate all y'all hanging out. Being a part of our 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 crew, yeah, much appreciated. And uh, we will we will catch y'all on the next one. Indeed, look forward to it. We've got to film another video for you tonight. So yes, so we're we're not done providing content for you yet. Just we're done providing content for tonight. <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you all so much once again. I'm Aiden Mattis. I'm Thorn Bussy. And thanks for stopping by the Lore Lodge. <laughs>